Earlier on, we saw the Italian Tricolori display team and, of course, the Turkish Stars. So let's see what the Ukrainian Air Force have got to offer with six of their very finest MiG-29s. Well, these gentlemen, the Ukrainian Falcons, are new visitors to the Royal International Air Tattoo. The team was only formed last autumn. They made their first display in May of this year at one of the airfields near Kiev, which, of course, is the capital of Ukraine, where they come from. They start as they mean to go on, uh, with a nice roll immediately after takeoff. That's one of the great things about the MiG-29. It's a very powerful fighter. Uh, it's got two huge Tomansky engines, and it is really a frontline fighter. There are not all that many aerobatic teams in the world formed from frontline fighters. Our own Red Arrows, for instance, uh, have advanced trainers. So it's quite something for a country like the Ukraine to use this very hot ship uh, as a, a, a vehicle for uh, a display team. They've got it very nicely painted uh, in these national Ukrainian colors. Now they're in a formation that they call fir tree with the six of them in that sort of star shape, but it suits the shape of the aircraft rather well. And there you can see the two huge engines underneath. Uh, they both produce about 18,300 pounds of thrust, each of them. So that's an enormous aeroplane. It's uh, about oh, 10 or 11 years old. Uh, it is primarily a fighter aircraft, but it can also be used for uh, bombing and um, delivering weapons onto the ground. One of the interesting things about it is that it doesn't have the sophisticated fly-by-wire controls of uh, American aircraft like the F-16. It's all fairly basic stuff, but nonetheless it's very rugged, it's very reliable, and you can operate it from um, short fields with, with rough runways and things. It even has um, special doors on the engine intakes uh, that prevent it sucking in stuff that could damage it when it's on the ground. There they've changed into a sort of rhombus formation as they go over in an oblique loop. That's a sort of looping the loop maneuver that turns slightly on its side. Lovely sight as they go past the clouds in the background. It always makes a big difference when you see aeroplanes with clouds in the background. You can tell how fast they're going. And you can see the exhaust trails from the big engines. Some of that is unburned fuel. There's another of their formation changes. They're going back into what is probably their favorite formation, which is, um, they call it a triangle shape. And that's quite a good shape for a six aircraft formation. So let's just watch the rest of their display and see what they can do. Some fantastic flying there by those six pilots of the Ukrainian Air Force. And you'll forgive me, won't you, if I don't give you their names. True enthusiasts amongst you will notice I'm standing in front of the F-15, which is, of course, the aircraft that the MiG-29 was based on. But you don't have to fly military aircraft to do all those wonderful aerobatics, as Liz Spate has been finding out. Well, we're away from the crowds and the noise of Fairford now, and we've come down to a little airfield in Dorset at Compton Abbas because we're going to be trying a little bit of aerobatic flying. And uh, this is the pilot who's going to be taking me up today, John Boyce. Now, I work with John at HTV, and uh, I didn't realise you were such a keen flyer, John. How long have you been flying for? Oh, about 10 years now. I started off flying microlights and uh, just progressed from there, really. Now, why do you do aerobatics? Because um, it's fun, for a start. I think any pilot wants to sort of explore the, you know, the, the horizons of his aircraft. And... Uh, we live in a very boring, flat, two-dimensional world, and when you get into a thing like this, this is your gateway to the third dimension. And apart from that, it's just very graceful. It's a beautiful thing to watch. It's like um, aerial ballet. Right. Now, this is the plane we're actually going to be going up in today. What can you tell me about this? Well, this is a Russian ex-military uh, trainer 
So this is the last uh, propeller aircraft they'd fly before they got into a jet. So it's laid out in very much the same way as a jet aircraft, and it's designed to fly like a jet as well. Okay. Now, it's a Russian aircraft. It, it, does it have any unusual features at all? Um, well, all the instruments are in Russian, which makes it quite, ah. <laughs> quite interesting flying the thing. Um, <clears throat> but also, because it comes from the Cold War era, uh, they put very small fuel tanks on it to stop any pilots getting any ideas about <laughs> defecting to the west in it. So the thing's only got about an hour and a half's endurance. But it's quite safe? Very safe. Okay, let's, let's give it a go. Go and find a parachute. Okay. With safety in mind, I'd been kitted out with a parachute, just in case. And I wasn't taking any chances as I strapped myself in, ready for the flight of my life. The cockpit of the Yak-52 was pretty cramped and would be very noisy, but the flying helmets meant John and I would be able to talk to one another while we were in the air. So we were all set to take to the skies. There was no going back now. As we taxied along for takeoff, I was feeling pretty confident, if a little nervous. John had explained how the G-force would make us feel four times heavier during manoeuvres than on the ground. But nothing could have prepared me for what was coming my way. My stomach was spinning, but what an unforgettable experience. Flying among the clouds at 5,000 feet, and the views were absolutely stunning. Miles of Dorset countryside stretched out below us as we soared gracefully across the sky. the sort of thing that's brought thousands of people to Fairford this weekend. Many of them have spent hours stuck in traffic jams getting here too. But of course, if you're a professional plane spotter, nothing is going to keep you away. Judging by the amount of cameras you have on you, you're obviously keen on aircraft, yes? Yep, yep. What's been the highlight of the afternoon for you so far then? Uh, Ukrainian MiG-29s. Well, you've taken pictures of the stealth bomber, I take it? Uh, I took one as it flew over. Well, you almost missed that one then. Uh, it's not that good, not that good. <laughs> not, impressed, not impressed with the stealth bomber at all. You're we not, we why are aren't you are Russian aviation enthusiasts. Russian aviation. So we're going to Russia in August to the big air show in Moscow, which we've been to for four times. So we, every year we go to Russia and then we're going to Hungary and then Czech Republic, following Russian aviation. We've got point defence uh, Sukhoi 30s down there from the Russian Air Force. That are I far bet superior to Eurofighter. I bet you can count the rivets, can't you? We can count the rivets, and we tell you if there's one been put in wrong. I'm amazed that so many people are interested in aircraft, and they're not all with respect anoraks. I think it's uh, pretty normal for the British. Whenever you see them walking down the street, 
If an airplane goes overhead, they look up. It's very unlike people in other countries. The British love aviation, and here at Fairford, we're giving them oh, well over 400, some 450 aircraft to look at at close quarters. Yes, the British are, are nuts on airplanes. You can't possibly be interested in fighter aircraft. Oh, I quite like the uniforms. <laughs> I am. <laughs> what do you oh, think of them all then? Brilliant. I might be joining the the, the aero the RAF. A, RAF when I'm older. So it's really good here. You can't possibly be interested in jet aircraft. Why are you here? With my husband. We just come back from Devon, so we thought we'd stop on the way through. Is is he the one who likes aircraft? Yeah. Not me. What do you think of the noise? Not too bad, actually. Not as bad as I thought it would be. What about the noise as they go by? Horrible. <laughs> what did you do when the planes went by? <laughs> <laughs> And can, um, dare I ask you what you think of the men in uniform? <laughs> <laughs> well, quite all right. <laughs> Which is the most difficult thing to organise, the aircraft or the people who come to see them? I think they're equally, diff equally difficult. Uh, we have to start communicating very, very early on with the overseas air forces to encourage them to come, some 14 months beforehand. We then got to work out a, a theme or themes for the event that's going to encourage the public to come. But of course, once the aeroplanes start saying they're coming, the interesting ones, we can then tell the public and they come. Nice to see the families enjoying themselves, which of course is what a day like this is all about. But for one particular family from Chippenham, well, this year's tattoo at Fairford contained a special surprise. The black stealth fighter had flown in from the States with a Wiltshire pilot at the controls. And for squadron leader Mark Sutton from Chippenham, there was a special reason for his visit. The 33-year-old pilot is on an RAF exchange in New Mexico. It was good to be yeah, home. Watching. <laughs> the futuristic Nighthawk aircraft is part of a top-secret American project. And no one was allowed to get too close. Nevertheless, the stealth was a real crowd puller, but the boys were more interested in seeing Dad. It's really nice to be back. First time back for about 18 months, and uh, the weather was kind to us. Nice flight across. It's great to get home. It's great to be able to bring the stealth back home and show it off a little. And it's really nice to be so close to home. Yeah, what's it like to see him back? Wonderful. Yeah. What about the boys? Oh, the boys are very me? excited. <laughs> Dumbstruck as well. Yes. <laughs> Can I ask you, Mark, what's the plane actually like to fly? Uh, it's surprisingly agile for uh, for the shape of it behind. It's all computer controlled and uh, flies unstable. But uh, it's actually very nice to fly. It's got an excellent autopilot for those long sorties like yesterday, and uh, it does its job very well. It's a little bit different to what I used to fly my uh, Air Force career over here, but uh, it does its job very well. Why is it such an unusual shape? Uh, it's all on the uh, stealth design. Uh, everything's uh, designed so it's angular, so it'll uh, bounce the radar off the aircraft face. Uh, that's why it looks so strange. Now, what's it actually made of? Uh, the, the base is uh, aluminium, uh, just for standard aircraft composites, but uh, the special skin Daddy, around it... a big airplane! <laughs> hey, wow! The, uh, the special composites that make up the, uh, the radar technology, uh, I really can't comment on that. Now, how do you feel to be involved in the American side of the stealth project? Uh, it's a great privilege for me to go across on the exchange to across there. Um, they treat me as a, 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 just a, another American on the squadron, which is really good. And um, the information exchange is good. It's really nice to see another Air Force and see how the way their Air Force runs. And it's great to be in a project like this, something special. So how is life different for you in New Mexico than it is in England? It's a lot warmer. <laughs> And it wasn't just his children who were pleased to see him. Oh, it's gorgeous yeah. to see him again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How do you feel about his uh, career? Oh, he's done amazingly well. Yeah. We're very proud of him. Do you not worry about him at all? Not now, no. Did you used to? A little. When, yeah. the when he was flying tornadoes and there were accidents, you know, like there is, he always used to ring me and say, I'm here, I'm <laughs> all right, which I thought was good. And yeah. it gave me confidence in him. 
Now, you say that there was quite an unusual thing that pushed him into flying when he was younger. Can you tell me about that? Um, well, he maintains it was watching Thunderbirds. <laughs> so, childhood dreams can come true. But for this real-life Thunderbird, it's just a flying visit. Squadron leader Sutton will be taking the stealth back to the States straight after the air show. Well, this is certainly one way of experiencing the thrills and spills of a crack air display team 